Now, how one woman's lifelong dream to become a mother became a tragic nightmare. She spent years struggling to have children, but when they finally came, she was left severely brain damaged from complications during delivery. And Andrea Canning now reports on a fierce court battle over whether the mother should even be allowed to see her children. It's a story with so many layers of heartbreak. Becoming a mother was something Abby Dorn had waited for her whole life. It's something she's always wanted to be a mother. After graduating from college and becoming a chiropractor, Abby married Dan Dorn in a fairy tale wedding. But for years, they struggled to conceive. Then, after turning to fertility treatments, in the fall of 2005, she got the good news she was having triplets. She was so excited to be pregnant. Uh, she had be she was beginning to say, I don't know if I'll ever get to be a mother. Abby did everything that the obstetricians told her to do. They told her to stay in bed. She stood in bed. Today, at nearly four years old, Esty, Yossi, and Ruvi are happy and healthy. But Abby hasn't been able to see them in over two years. She's unable to live a normal life. I love you so, so much, pretty girl. The family's heartbreak all began when Abby lost a lot of blood after childbirth, leading to oxygen deprivation and ultimately brain damage. Her struggle has now become a landmark case about what's best for the child of a disabled parent. Dan Dorn, who divorced Abby in 2007, believes she will never recover and fears exposing their children to her will traumatize them. But her parents, Paul and Susan Cohen, believe otherwise and have devoted their lives to her rehabilitation. They say Abby can communicate by speaking through her eyes, that one long blink means yes. Is seeing your children the most important thing in the world to you? Why do you feel it's so important for Abby to have regular communication with her children? A mother needs to see her children. She gave them life. The children have to know that they have a mommy, and she has to know that her children are growing. How present was Dan in the days following the tragedy? Well, he was there all the time as well. He did manage to bring the children a couple of times. I did put them in her arms so she didn't get to hold them there. But eventually the visit stopped and on the triplet's first birthday came devastating news. He said, well, I need to move on. Did you immediately worry about the relationship between the children and Abby when you got that phone call? Yes, I did. And so began a bitter family feud now playing out in court. Abby has a right, a constitutional legal right to uh, have her parents, her representatives, request visitation on her behalf. Dan Dorn's attorney released a statement saying, while the grandparents criticized the father, they denied him any footage or medical update of Abby's condition before opening their home to Good Morning America. This case is sad and tragic. However, it is also legally complex, and there is no reason to try this case by public opinion. His medical experts argue Abby is in a vegetative state with virtually no hope for recovery. Do you see Dan's side of it at all? I do in that he, he is fearful. He's fearful for his children. I think that he lacks knowledge. The Cohens say Abby is able to utter words and is making huge improvements through daily therapy that includes everything from music to sound vibrations that help stimulate the brain. She can even run a special program using her brain waves. Someone may look at Abby and think she's not all there. She feels, she cries, uh, she, she smirks, she smiles. I know that Abby's there. It's well beyond a mother's love. That love can be seen in this painting the Coens had commissioned for their daughter. Abby walking the dunes of South Carolina with her three laughing children. It's the picture-perfect life she should have had but they vow to never give up. If all she can say to them is one or two words and show in her eyes how much she loves them, I think that will mean a great deal to those children. Abby's doctors believe seeing her children will help improve her mental condition. Her parents say she lights up around her nieces and nephews. And George, the trial is set for May 13th. What a sad story.